everybody. Um, I'm Emma and I am back with the beautiful Lisa Carney. Hello, Lisa. Hello. <laughs> so Lisa is from Pelvic Solutions and um, she's going to tell us a little bit more about yourself, Lisa, if you can, and uh, why we may, at some point in our lives, may need to see a pelvic floor physio. And we're going to talk about today about um, the, well, post partum i should say post-pregnancy having a baby and what that means to your body um both from the breath pelvic floor and how it all interconnects Does that sound all right lisa perfect love it <laughs> so tell me a bit about you lisa how did you get to what you're doing right now so my i guess my own journey started with my birthing story in particular pain point i guess of having a um having a, a pregnancy and a birth which was kind of less than what I ex like ideal or less than what I expected so to speak so um, I guess through my own journey of postnatal recovery and postpartum healing um, realized how much sort of misinformation there was out there or, or lack of support for women who um, have very very common problems like incontinence and prolapse and things like that in the postnatal period that um, that really just go unaddressed if there's nobody there to say, come on, we can help you, let's do this. So, um, so, so it was kind of through my own journey and through my own experiences and kind of, I've been a physio for a long time and mm -hmm. then realising that so many of these problems that I'd been seeing as a general physio uh, were, were contributed for, like were, were from the postnatal body or like the mm. strategies and the um, in, impairment, so to speak, that we pick up in pregnancy and postnatal, and if it's not corrected in that in that period, then it just continues into seventies, eighties, has ever, however long. <laughs> so, yeah. So I guess um, the more I came into it, the more I realised um, uh, that the um, these women don't have a strong voice because there's a lot of shame and stigma around these conditions. So, um, the more I'm into women's health. Uh, the more I'm more of an advocate and kind of shouting from the rooftops to say, you guys don't need to put up with this anymore. There is help available and we can help you. Um, and here's how we're going to do it. Yeah. So that's, that's sort of, that's my journey through public health and into private practice because in private, I can actually service more and more, more, more of the community and also focus a lot more on preventative care and stop these problems from happening in the first place. <laughs> Love it. I love it. And you're so passionate about it and it comes across in everything you do as a physio. And so that's where you've actually set up a, a, a clinic that's dedicated to working on pelvic floor solutions, isn't it? For, yeah. for the whole body, <laughs> um, which is a great, a great way of looking at it. And I think that there is more awareness, but you know, you have to drive that awareness. I know it's what you do a lot of is actually mm. education. So we're not the ambulance at the bottom of the hill, <laughs> picking up the pelvic floor, trying to put Literally. it back together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> put it back inside in some cases. Oh, um, yeah. it's, uh, it's amazing the work that you do. And I think people want to know, well, why would you need this? And is it normal? The thing, that the signs and symptoms that you maybe should be experiencing or being aware of um and it'd be really important to, be, to kind of know as well as someone that's generally out there um, and as a physiotherapist like i have full credit to you because it's not the kind of job that i ever want to go and deal with <laughs> like the gloves on i'm like no <laughs> um i leave it to you and you do the pelvic floor and the uh, you know of that core the floor of the core and i'm happy to be working on that top but that helps to to work as that cylinder and support system all the that's way through right. yeah yeah so I mean I think that's probably part of the biggest problem or a barrier for people accessing coming to see us is that they mm -hmm. um there's so many perceptions that oh this cat it's, it's my assistant <laughs> <Tail>. <laughs> awesome it's, not, it's got no tail so. um yeah no the, the there's a perception out there that you you just need to put up with any pain into the vagina or any kind of painful sex or um, leaking, coughing and sneezing and wetting your pants. Well, my grandma did, my mum did, therefore I'm going to. So it's normal, right? You know, so that's the, that's the barrier is that the, that um, people perceive it to be normal because it, it, it essentially has been uh, normalized by mainstream media as well as um, our previous generations who just put up with these things mm. because the information was not out there. So, um, yeah, so, so part of the rehabilitation journey is to, to, well, the actual foundation of the, of the postnatal rehabilitation journey is to restore the breath, right? Yeah. <laughs> and I know that that's something you're particularly passionate about. And, um, my, my job is, um, is, is always breath work first because it doesn't, um, 
there's so many problems with po- like with this, these babies, right? They grow up, and even like short people or tall people, these babies push up underneath our ribs, and they kind of have a really nice way of uh, reorganizing our um, lungs <laughs> yep. and, our, and our ribs and our backs and all of these things. So, um, and people get stuck like that because then they are so focused on breastfeeding and caring for mm. children. They they really the focus goes away from. Um, from themselves and mm. there's also a lot of sleeplessness and over, over, like exhaustion and that all contributes to this upper chest kind of breathing pattern not only these kids push them up these babies mm. but then we get overwhelmed lack of sleep and we oh, like this and yeah. I mean I think my particular my own journey with breathing dysfunction was when I was in working at the hospital in Dunstan and I had a colleague say to me, whoa, your breathing is terrible. You're like all oh, breathing up here and your shoulders are all hunched up. And I had yeah. absolutely no awareness of it, you know, and I'm a, I'm a physio. I should know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was just saying like my own breathing journey was very much that and looking at stress and, and pushing and pushing, pushing through business and life and, and pregnancies as well. That was my awakening. And unfortunately, I think in many ways you have these handbrake moments in your life that will tell you, that something's not right. And uh, sometimes we have like little warning signs, little wee, wee thing that we just ignore and we just like, oh, no, 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 that's not enough. Oh, no, no, it doesn't really matter. And actually we need to listen into those little cues in the body. Um, and I think people will be feeling that now with everything going on in the world and life and change and business, sometimes our body is screaming a little bit louder because it's being stuck into that stress mode. And we have that, like you said, when you have new babies, it, there is just such an overdrive and hijacking with all the sleep deprivation and all the things you said mm-hmm. and, um, and the expectations that we have on ourselves as well. There's so many layers that will trigger the breathing dysfunction that will lead, then lead often to pelvic floor dysfunction, which is already happening because it's been like, you know, destroyed <laughs> on the way out. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, and that goes for, that's not only for, you know, vaginal deliveries, it's for C-section yeah. deliveries as well. You know, it's not exclusive to having a vaginal delivery. It's um, it, it's just so, you can't restore. People come say, oh, I've got a tummy muscle separation and I, my tummy's all soft and not like it was. I don't have my six-pack anymore, you know. Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, but anyway, six-packs for 20-year-olds. We don't need that. <laughs> But like the uh, the 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 concept is about restoring the tummy and the abdominal wall. But what people misunderstand is that you you're never going to restore the function to the abdominals unless you first allow the diaphragm to come down and restore the mobility to the ribs. And then the, what do you know? The pelvic floor automatically functions better because it's starting to work with its teammates, the diaphragm. Mm-hmm and yep. the abdominal wall and the pelvic floor at the bottom of the cylinder, it starts to work together. And so, so by, by restoring the breath, you're automatically improving the abdominal control and the pelvic floor control. So, so when, you work, when we're working with things like incontinence, urinary or fecal, hate to say it, but it's common, mm. um, and, um, or like wind sleeping out, or um, things like prolapse, the pelvic organs dropping down and outside of the vagina, and as, mm. as much as this is not something that's commonly talked about, it's incredibly common. Like the statistics mm. are something like 50%. So um, it's huge. 50% of women, like this is uh, in some studies. So it's, uh, it's a very well experienced prolapse at some part of their life. So yeah. I guess we all get to, to come back to your first question was about when should people come in? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's really in pregnancy so that we can – talk to you about these things that are not talked about and figure out how to keep your pelvic floor strong, keep you breathing well in pregnancy and then teaching you how to get out of those strategies in postnatal so that you don't yeah. come and see me when you're 70 and tell me you wish you had have seen me sooner. <laughs> yeah, we know a lot more now too. We're being much more proactive yeah. and that's about um, the systems that we're putting in place like seeing you. So people then are going to value that that's an important thing to do in that pregnancy journey. And, like, and that's why people come and do the breathing um, workshops that they do during the pregnancy because they're like, I need some skills. I'm already feeling it. You add sleep deprivation on there and a new baby and I'm really worried. And so it's getting you to have strategies in place beforehand and that yeah. that takes practice um and i guess for, i'd like, like to ask you because you've got some exciting news at the moment haven't you lisa <laughs> i do i'm having i've got a little human inside at the moment growing yeah. yes <laughs> so how many weeks are you now uh 21 weeks so we're due in september 
Yeah. Okay, so this exciting. is your number two, isn't it? So this, this is a very different experience. Yeah, yeah. Number two, number two for us, and it's uh, uh, our oldest is seven years old, and you know, I think that just goes to show, even me with with my knowledge, that I was carrying a mm. lot of trauma, a lot of trauma, mm. and it's taken me a long time to process it and get through it. Um, and so, you know, I think. Uh, when people ask you, you've got a seven-year-old, when's the second one coming? Like if someone else asked me that, <laughs> you know, yeah. there's, there's so many different ways of coming to having a family and so many people miscarry. Or not having a family babies. as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or choose not to have children and that's okay as well. But there is mm. so much pressure on, on us from society as like middle-aged women who should yeah. be breeding by now, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you're still working and you're doing all these things. And so there's just like, the, I mean, that yeah. lowers the expectations as well of what you should and what's ideal. And there is no right way of, of, of living your life, having family, not having family. It's just That's what's it. yeah. right for your circumstances. Yeah. And I think in terms of, um, you know, I've got, I've got my own business. We have lots of pressure and lots of our clients are in the same situation or mums in general. We're expected yeah. to be working now we live in a town where most couple most relationships are double income parents so you know mm. that that's what's needed so mm. um there's a lot of pressure on on women and and that creates stress in the body which needs to be addressed to be able to have a healthy pregnancy and a healthy delivery so yeah it's um certainly something which is preventative work <laughs> yeah so how are you dealing with this different this time around, this pregnancy? Oh, I am resting a lot more, <laughs> trying to um, – I, I am doing a lot of um, work on stress and breathing. Yeah. I take regular breathing breaks through the day, four times a day, between um, like five, nine and 15 minutes. And I'm getting some help from um, the team at Dr. Wellness, um, yeah. Tracy and the team there. And Grant, so that's uh, that's been really wonderful. Like I need help to try and get me mm. through that at the moment because it is certainly high stress. So, um, and just just pu pulling on 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 friends and family to say, look, you know, we've got some we've got some stress going. It's hard to run a business right now. It's hard to stay afloat, and um, you know, and we've got family doing lessons with our son, and mm. you know, just actually asking for help has been a huge kind of insight insightful experience for me <laughs> i love that because we're not meant to work live and work in, in silos or small bubbles like this is not the way we're yeah. meant to be living our lives and so when you are trying to raise children and run businesses and and give out like you are as well it's actually it takes its toll and like like everyone else might be watching this as, as much as health professionals we have to do the work as as well like do the trauma stuff work on the body and be acknowledged that you know sometimes we get derailed and we have to find our own way of getting back on because and with pregnancy you're being hijacked as well from that little human who's amazing <laughs> but sucking the life force into yeah. making them grow and so it's really a, really a, a balancing act always and we're never going to get it right that's right, and and it is we're not it's we're not sort of immune to that because we 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 know the information and what we should be doing, but um, yeah. you know it, it's certainly following following our own advice. But yeah, I think probably nutrition, exercise, education, you know, like uh, rest, rest and restoration is mm. probably the biggest thing, and stress management that I'm doing much differently this time. Yeah. <laughs> not accepting stress being inside the body or feeling overwhelmed as being okay and actually taking proactive steps to um to manage that yeah more mindfulness more meditation i think that's so important as well because we have that bandwidth that we can cope with at certain times mm -hmm. but you know we've got we've got a bit more going on in the world right now than just your normal basic uh, cruisy but if, you, if the business is working fine and if everything was going well we were working working and seeing patients and doing normal stuff then it could be okay but we've got covid and we've got other stuff happening that is impacting that that bandwidth stress and mm -hmm. so and plus pregnancy so it's kind of like okay we need to do more work at that time to get our bandwidth back to being where it should be to cope mm -hmm. and um mm -hmm. that, that that goes out through life and phases so just when people kind of with the pregnancies you know you can be going well one month and the next month it changes and then it's, it's just a it's a roller coaster isn't it 
That's it. Next time you can't get to midday without napping, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it's just listening to what the body needs and the mind needs first um, and putting that ahead of what everybody else needs from you. <laughs> That's such a hard thing to shift to as well. To be so like, hard. Consciously go, you know what? I need to be put first first. Um, yeah. It was a big lesson I learned in my um, th- early thirties, and now my late thirties. And uh, it was it was early thirties, and it was uh, this experience of like going, if I'm not right, if I'm not functioning, then nobody else is going to be okay in this household. Mm-hmm. It's going to ricochet through. It's going to have a huge impact on everybody around. And um, and it feels selfish to start with, but actually, it's because my upbringing wasn't like that. You know, I, yeah. mum of, I'm one of six kids and there is, um, my mum worked as well, but there was just, you know, she, she wasn't always a priority and I, and, and, and I think she's been more that now and we try and show her that she's so worth taking that time yeah. um, because she's amazing. But I'm trying to model that for my children now too, going, look, I need to put things into place. Otherwise, if I am, my bandwidth shortened, my emotional bandwidth is really shortened yeah. and that's when we kind of get, um, behaviors that we're not as happy with in our life to, mm-hmm. to occur Absolutely. so i think there's yeah. some really big lessons and and one part is actually getting that support putting myself forward is going i need to do the breath work i need to do the pelvic floor work and learn about what that is you know mm-hmm. it's all about learning yeah so many ways yeah exactly and you know there's so many wonderful professionals that can facilitate that with you rather than thinking that you have all the answers and you have to know everything on how to do it yourself mm-hmm. it's an investment in your long-term health you know these these are these are private practice clinics but they, they are going to support you through this and out the other end yeah. which means you'll be more productive faster <laughs> out the yeah. other end and you, you'll be able to raise a happy healthy family rather than you know, holding it and, and trying to deal with everything on your own. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's really important to talk to the women that are having babies right now and the ones that have had, um, going to have, maybe in the future have them, um, but also then maybe in the next few times we have a chat, Lisa, about what people can do postpartum down a track mm-hmm. um, and when they are maybe in that, that further stage along, maybe even my stage where I've had two kids, last one was a few years ago, six years ago now, yeah. and maybe how that impact is, is can can flow into things like sport and exercise and other areas because I think that's an interesting sort of topic to kind of get people talking about. Absolutely. I'd love that. They'd be fabulous, particular passions. <laughs> yes. So if people want to talk with you and learn, because you, you work online, obviously, as well. So people can yes. actually work um, virtually with you, which I think is an amazing thing. You think of public floor physio, you think you must be in person. But it's not like that at all. You can do and see and educate and so much in this, this format. Yeah, we were doing online consults before pre-COVID, but now it's really come to the table how much we can help people online. And actually people prefer it because they don't have to travel. They don't have to try and get their kids sleeping or entertain their children inside the appointment. They can really focus, kick the kids out doing whatever they want. Yeah. And um, it's really convenient and we can do so much. Like they're really, because we are experienced clinicians, we can diagnose from the story really mm-hmm. and uh, ask a few more questions to confirm the diagnosis. Maybe can do self-examinations and things like yeah. that if needed. Um, but, but largely we really know what's going on by the time someone's told us their story. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, so treatment is just, is, has been fabulous, such great results online. Yeah. And once people kind of get over the technological barriers, they're, yeah. they're in. And I'm not sure <laughs> if they'll convert back to, to coming to see us in the clinic because they're really happy online. So, which, you know, it allows us to access a lot of people who are remote and rural, who yeah. don't have specialists in the area. Um, and uh, and the, the people who are a vulnerable don't want to come out mm. and, or um, want a second opinion and don't really want to travel for it or things like that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's um, yeah, it's good. That's awesome. So Pelvic Floor Solutions, that's what they should be searching to find you, Lisa Carney? Is that Pelvic what we should solutions. be looking at? Yeah. Pelvic uh, Solutions. Like our tag, Pelvic Solutions. Our tagline on social is Pelvic Physio Solutions. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. 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 Anybody wants to learn more about the breathing, I'm the same. I do one-on-one consults online and then also the live workshops, which actually I find people, it's a really good starting point to actually get that awareness. And we have lots of people from um, your clinic and other places around New Zealand and around the world uh, that are actually coming in and checking out the Breathe Right and Reduce Your Stress workshops. Because getting that as your foundation 
it's huge. It changes everybody everything. Everybody needs it. Everybody. I've done it. Uh, I'll do it again. It's just absolutely fabulous. Everybody should do it. <laughs> okay. So we'll sign off from there. And thank you, Lisa, for your time, for sharing your knowledge. And I think hopefully um, inspiring mums, women out there to go get supported, but also to put themselves first. Absolutely. Thanks, Eva. Nice to see you.